This is Bishop Michael Burbage, and you are listening to the Walk Humbly Podcast. Welcome to the Walk Humbly Podcast. I'm Billy Atwell, Chief Communications Officer for the Diocese and your co-host. If you haven't already, please make sure you rate this podcast and write a review on iTunes, Google Play, and Stitcher, and we're now on Overcast as well. Sign up for our e-newsletter at arlingtondiocese.org, and you can follow Bishop Burbage on Twitter, almost 15,000 of you do, at Bishop Burbage. And you can send questions for Bishop Burbage on this podcast. You can email us those questions, info at arlingtondiocese.org, or you can tag us on social media with that question. I welcome your host, Bishop Burbage. Bishop, how are you? I'm doing well, Billy. It's hard to believe that we are taping this podcast as we get ready for Labor Day weekend. Where did the summer go? Absolutely. I saw kids getting on school buses and everything. I said, how is this already back? We're already back on that schedule. So for our first topic, this past weekend, you celebrated a solemn mass for victims of sexual abuse and their healing. What was your message for those in attendance, particularly for the victims? Well, first of all, thanks for mentioning that the intention for that mass uh, was specifically for victims of sexual abuse, asking our Lord Jesus uh, to bless them uh, with his healing love. And in the homily, uh, I was able to convey uh, to all victims of sexual abuse that the the Diocese of Arlington uh, stands ready uh, to assist you in that healing process. Uh, and we will be steadfast in doing, as we have done throughout the years, everything possible uh, to prevent such horrific acts from occurring again uh, within our church. I wanted to uh, assure victims uh, that if they ever were met with disregard from the church in the past, and we've heard stories where, sadly and yeah. unbelievably, victims were, uh, that is not the case in our diocese. Uh, it doesn't matter how, where the abuse occurred. Uh, it doesn't matter how long. It, if we can help you, to please come forward, and we will assist you, uh, as I said, in every way possible. And uh, I also use the, the homily uh, to inform, and because I think it's important to conven- uh, continue to remind all the faithful of what has changed uh, since 2002, yeah, when there are allegations of sexual uh, abuse of a minor, and uh, you know what changed is that immediately uh, the uh, the accusation is brought forth to law enforcement. Right. That that's that's no matter what that that is what immediately happens, and then any internal subsequent review. Once it's in the hands of law enforcement, it's conducted within the diocese with the assistance of laymen, laywomen with expertise in areas uh, for such a review. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so we rely on, on that expertise of the laity uh, who assist on the diocesan board. And then we also have a zero tolerance uh, policy that if there is the credible accusation of sexual abuse, uh, that, that priest, that religious will no longer be in, in, in active ministry. Uh, I also try to encourage uh, the faithful in these very difficult times uh, that the the Lord has not failed us. The Lord never fails us. Uh, his leaders have, his shepherds have, and but the Lord has not. And so I encourage the, our faithful to more than ever uh, to turn to the Lord. He's the only one who can see us through this and out of this. And so we need him more than ever. And what we're dealing with um, here uh, is also an evil. I mean, one of the most horrific evils you can think of. Exactly. The, the yeah. abuse of, of children. Uh, and so that evil, uh, policies in themselves, procedures in themselves, which are essential and must be faithfully implemented, uh, that can't guarantee that we're going to get rid of evil. But we know that, that God's power and strength is more than evil. So all of us... Uh, have to put on that armor, that shield, uh, to to fight against the evil and to root it out uh, of our of our church. And you also issued a letter to the faithful that was made available at all parishes this past week. And anyone that wants to read that letter, if you didn't uh, see a copy, uh, you can go to arlingtondiocese.org slash child protection, and we've linked that that letter there. Uh, Bishop, within your homily, the, the reading for the day was, was so pertinent, at least one of them was, where it said... Um, because you drew from Joshua, which states, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. And I think for a lot of people that I talked to after 
that gave them hope that we can chart a path forward from this, that this is a dark hour. This is a dark time for the church. And many people are, are rightfully sad in what they're hearing out of Pennsylvania and so on. But we know Christ's church will, will persist through this. We will fight through this currently, and we have a future in Christ. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Really touched a lot of folks. Talk about how you wove that theme in. While it's challenging now, painting a path forward. Yes, uh, 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 the evil one uh, would want nothing more than for us to be paralyzed. I mean, we're all feeling uh, anger and sadness and, you know, we're disillusioned and confused. So the evil one will want nothing more than for us to be paralyzed. And I thought that reading was so pertinent. Imagine if we all can say, yes, I'm going through a lot of emotions here. This is a very difficult time. But as for me and my household, we are going to serve the Lord. In other words, we are going to continue God's works, the, the corporal works, the spiritual works of mercy. There, we have to continue to teach, to evangelize, to serve the poor. Uh, we're going to serve the Lord. We're not going to be paralyzed. Uh, and then good begins to triumph over evil. And you've used that that message in other instances too, because you you've remained out with the faithful. You you were at Christ House the other day. You were at the Saint Lucy Project, uh, blessing a new uh, refrigerator for fresh produce for the poor. And it hasn't stopped you from going out. Do you feel a reluctance? I mean, with everything that's going on. Well, it's it's different. I have to say because um, you you have a heavy heart, and and you know people are angry. And, and so I, I look at my schedule, you know, especially now as we're getting into things uh, with school time, starting yeah. and everything beginning. And it's exciting. You know, I love going out to the schools and to the parishes and to the Catholic charities institutions and to the college campuses. Uh, and, I, and I'm going to do that with my head up high and with zeal and enthusiasm. But yeah, it's it's a little bit more challenging uh, because the, the heart is heavy, and we you know when I'm out, I, I continue to hear different reactions, and not all all favorable. Mm. Uh, but God, you know, God God gives us the grace, and uh, and that's what I encourage our, our faithful to do. You may have to motivate yourself a little differently. Uh, you may have to kind of try a little bit harder, uh, but be able to say, as for me, my life, my household. We're going to serve the Lord, and that's how good triumphs Billy over evil. That's wonderful. Now, uh, just just last week, just recently, uh, there was an 11-page letter authored by Archbishop Carla Maria Vigano. Uh, part of what was so shocking about the letter was that the author is a former papal nuncio, which is a, a chief diplomat on behalf of the Holy Father. And the, the gist of it, at least some of his claims, it's a long letter that people can read online, uh, were statements that Pope Francis and Cardinal Wuerl of the Archdiocese of Washington were aware of sanctions placed on now Archbishop uh, McCarrick. Uh, he claims those restrictions to his ministry and travel were removed by Pope Francis. What was your response to these allegations? Well, it was I was out... Um uh, to dinner that evening um, with some of the priests from our diocese and got in my car. It was a little bit later Saturday and I saw all these text messages, like so many. I said, what, what is happening? Right. And it was like, did you see this letter? Because it's unprecedented. Right. Uh, this is the first time that we've ever seen a letter like this. Uh, I, I, I know Archbishop Vigano um, uh, and when I saw that he wrote such an extensive letter, of course, I, I wanted to read, uh, you know, his statements. And uh, as you mentioned, it is, it's, we've never seen anything like this before. And uh, he explained the reason for writing was because uh, he felt it was a matter of conscience for him. And so now we have these statements that are, are you know, in a sense, uh, calling into question of you know, who knew what about the Archbishop McCarrick situation and when, and there are a lot of questions there. And I think Cardinal DiNardo in our um, president of our, the conference of our, our Catholic bishops in, in his statement uh, said it correctly. We need to review uh, Archbishop Vigano's letter carefully, mm -hmm. comprehensively, thoroughly, uh, and evidence needs to be given. But the bottom line is we need to know the truth. What is the truth? And, uh, and that demands a comprehensive review. All the faithful um, 
need to hear the, the answer to those questions. You know, who knew what and when? And, and so I know the uh, Cardinal DiNardo is, uh, I, I believe, mentioned that he is asking, you know, the Holy Father to uh, assist in putting into place uh, the support we need to get uh, those answers. And uh, we know, we always say that the truth is, is, is what sets us free. And so we need to get to the to, to the truth of, of 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 regarding this matter. And if anyone wants to read Cardinal Donardo's full statement, you, uh, just go to usccb.org and you can find it there. And I'm pretty sure I've mispronounced the Archbishop's last name every time I've used it. So it's Vigano, right? Billy, just about every <laughs> reporter I've heard uh, has, has uh, mispronounced the name. It's, it's Vigano. Vigano. Yeah. I, I'm in good company, yeah. but it doesn't make me any yeah. more right. <laughs> So anyway, the next topic, Bishop, uh, Labor Day. You know, so this weekend is the Labor Day holiday. It's always the, the first Monday in September. It honors the American laborer and the contributions that workers make to the, to the growth, to the prosperity and the security that we're blessed to have in this country. It's not a security or growth or prosperity that most countries have. We're very blessed to have it. And the church has always stood up for the worker. You know, we venerate you know, St. Joseph, the worker. So what is your message to the faithful for this, this national holiday? Right, and, and you're right. Uh, it's, it, it comes under our fundamental belief of the dignity of the human person. And so therefore that dignity must be respected and upheld in, in the workplace. Uh, the dignity of the work, the, the, the dignity of the worker. And so there should be, you know, safe environments. There should be fair wages. And, and, and all that uh, falls into our belief of, of what we believe about the human person. Mm. And I also think that uh, all of us should reflect uh, upon our work. Why do we work? Uh, because we have been given gifts and abilities by God and the health that we need uh, to do work for his glory. Imagine if you approach, no matter what your work is, imagine if you approach work every day, your labor. Lord, whatever my whatever effort, whatever labor you're asking me this day, it's for you. I'm doing this for you. What a, what a beautiful way. With the hope, Lord, of contributing uh, to the good and to uh, the good of society and the good of community. And I think it's also important to pray that we know that so many workers in our day and age, uh, so many individuals are either unemployed or underemployed. Uh, and we have to pray that, uh, that there's a transformation there. So all workers are given that, that opportunity and, and to be uh, compensated as such in a just way. And it's also a thing that Labor Day, as we reflect upon work, is also... Uh, good for all of us to reflect in our own lives, right? Work is not to control us, uh, right? You know, it can so easily take the place of of uh, we lose a balance, we lose a, a sense of priorities. It's supposed to complement everything else we do. Don't get me wrong; I think we should work, and I love I don't I love seeing people who love their job. Right, I, you know, matter, no matter where I go, it's it, inspiring. It's just, ins I just love it. They love their work. They're they're passionate about it. They show an enthusiasm for it. it, it it's the way it should be. Uh, but at the same time, we have to create a healthy balance. Uh, you know, it doesn't take priority over our our faith, our family, you know, our own well being. You know, we don't want to become workaholics in right. a sense because then we lose that healthy balance uh, that we need. So. I, you know, that's why God told us to rest Then on the seventh day, right? Uh, you need to keep that balance. And I just ask all of our, our faithful to, to just examine, you know, making sure work has its proper balance in its life. It's always for God's glory. It's always in service of others. And it's not motivated by the things of this world, whether it be money or prestige, that so easily fade that's such a good point because a lot of times I think we almost look at work as as a negative rather than under the conditions of you know fair wages and reasonable hours. It's it's a good we're we're made for work. Whereas sometimes it's we, we think to ourselves, well, if I could only win the lottery, I'd be happy. Right. I yeah. wouldn't have to work. I'd sit on a beach and drink pina coladas, and uh, that, that's the life, isn't it? That's yeah. how I want to live out my day. But we wouldn't be happy that no, way. There is something created. good about we're, work. We're created to work in a sense. Yes. Uh, uh, that's why God has given us uh, our gifts and talents, our well being. Uh, and so, uh, but he wants us to re recreate and recreate uh, 
also sometimes. Now you're known for working a lot. Are you taking some time off this weekend? I will have a, a little time off this okay. weekend. In fact, <laughs> I have a, uh, a great day on Sunday, an annual tradition in the Diocese of Arlington, uh, where all, all the priests, we gather uh, on Sunday, oh, uh, nice. Labor Day weekend, to celebrate just the fraternity uh, that is ours. So I, very, I, I always love being with our priests. So I very much uh, look forward to that. And especially at this time, you all need that, yeah, that rejuvenation. Yeah. And you know, my, my theme that I always use when we talk about work, it's, I steal it from Pope Francis. Of you know, I know my staff loves it when I say it, uh, that there's a difference of, 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 you know, at the end of a day, it's okay to be tired. That means you worked hard and, and you, gave the, you gave your best effort. Just don't be exhausted because if you're exhausted, then you're struggling to get up the next day yeah. to do it again. So that means you, you've lost some sort of balance if you're getting exhausted. Yeah. So at the end of the day, yeah, I was, I was, you know, I'm tired, but can't wait to begin again tomorrow. That's the balance we always want to achieve. Absolutely. All right, so we have some questions, and one question comes up regularly, and it comes up each year. It's your pro football predictions. We're coming up on the NFL season. <laughs> Everyone knows you're an Eagles fan. We'll forgive you for that. But uh, <laughs> what is uh, what are your? Do you have any predictions for this coming season, or any thoughts going into it? Well, you know, um, I don't know why, but this word keeps coming to mind. It's uh, repeat. Re- I saw that coming. <laughs> I said, yeah, that's going to be a repeat. Yeah, that's that's the word. So I'm going to go with that prediction. <laughs> I'll say no more. Let's change the subject. <laughs> um. All right, so David from uh, Holy Family in Woodbridge, he said, uh, if you could spend an afternoon with any doctor of the church, who would it be and why? And maybe you could also talk about what a, a doctor of the church is. People might not be familiar with that. Right, yeah. Uh, you know, I always, I always like, I don't like the questions where I'm limited to one, so I never give one answer, right? Uh, <laughs> who are your favorites? Uh, you yeah. know, doctors of the church have been recognized for their great contributions in, you know, theology and, 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 and writing of taught and, and their the sound teaching. Uh, you know, just because of my seminary training in philosophy and theology, so St. Augustine and St. Thomas Aquinas are, are two of my favorites. Uh, uh, great love for both of them and study them um, extensively. I'm sure. Um, I love St. Alphonsus Liguori, the founder of Redemptorist. Oh, uh, great. Yeah. Um, and great moral theology, a theologian and an apologist, you know, of you know, able to respond to the arguments of the day yeah. you know, to explain the faith. And um, I also, um, you know, our first uh, woman uh, doctor to church was St. Teresa of Avila. So I guess I'm not going to give you one word, uh, one answer there. <laughs> That's okay. It's your podcast. <laughs> you can listen to as many doctors as you want. So uh, then Bridget, uh, she doesn't mention her parish. She says, one of my coworkers asked me if I believe that Jesus Christ loves people who are gay. I said that I believe that he came to live and die for me because he saved me. And that I said I was created for love. How can I better respond to this? Um, or do I just lay it in the hands of God? No, you can, you can respond. That's a good question. Um, just respond, but you can assure that uh, the God's love is uh, all-inclusive. There are no conditions. God loves all his children, and, uh, and to be reassured of that. Um, and so, and out of love, it's out of love that the Lord uh, gives us a path to follow, uh, he, he, his ways, his commands, his truth, uh, is, is all given to us out of love so that we can, um, you know, find the, the joy and the peace that we're seeking. And so, uh, God is love and, and God loves all his children. And we can say that with great confidence to all those we meet. Very good. Bishop, any, any final thoughts? And then if you would send us off with your blessing. Yeah, just say, I guess, Billy, um, you know, you, we've talked today again uh, about, um, you know, the, the difficult issues and, and struggles that we're facing, and even the Archbishop Vigano letter. Um, and what I'm seeing happening um, within the church, within the diocese, even among bishops, uh, is, is a divide of, of people taking sides. Um, and I think that's the last thing that we need in the church right now we're, we're in we're in stormy waters to begin with yeah. and these are dark times we don't need to compound it uh by being uh, split by being divided and i'm seeing it in, in many ways and you know that's why my answer to the archbishop vigano question was you know let's let's have due process you know yeah, we need be, clarity for right sure. we need clarity we need to get to the truth but allow that to take place 
there's no need to you know discredit or, or make judgments at, at this point let's let's follow that process but even in 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 our approach right now the the best thing some and people are asking me um and i'm grateful for that you know bishop you know they shared with me their emotions and if that's their emotions then it's acceptable that's that's where they are uh but there so many are still asking what can we do you know yeah. what can we do and like i mentioned earlier we we do the works of god we 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 draw closer to him um and but we tried we try to make the body of christ stronger uh you know if anyone uh leaves the body the community's weaker mm -hmm. uh if anyone is if we're if we are uh alienating ourselves from certain people within the body uh, and then we're then we're we're hurting it and so you know praying for that grace to 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 remain united as god's family as brothers and sisters in christ uh and that goes for all of us um and so that that's a hope and prayer for me i do hope it, it is a labor day weekend so uh thank uh all the all the faithful who who work so hard every day out of love for god out of love for their families for their children they work so hard for them so thank you for that great example uh hoping that you get some time to recreate because we all know i don't know why but for after labor day things seem to get back uh to a real routine uh yeah. so i hope it's a time of, of, of recreation and recreation uh for our listeners and um asking if we all could stay united in our prayers for all victims of sexual abuse all those crying out uh for our assistance if we can stay united in our prayers for our church and for one another so that we may walk humbly with our God. Thank you for listening to the Walk Humbly podcast. Make sure you check out more episodes on iTunes, Google Play, and Stitcher. You can follow me on Twitter at Bishop Burbage, where I offer spiritual reflections each morning in the gospel and share photos and updates of what is going on in the Diocese of Arlington. Stay up to date with news, event information, inspirational content, and more by subscribing to our e-newsletter at arlingtondiocese.org.